Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna call a meeting to order and uh, wanted to review the agenda uh, first. Um, so first on the list, we'll have, um, actually I'm gonna introduce um, us um, in a moment and we'll talk a little bit to her. Uh, we have public comment um, and uh, then um, so that Christine can continue some contact calling, we'll hear uh, Christine's COVID uh, report and then go to um, Bob uh, for discussion of alcohol license. Um, then we're gonna follow up and finalize uh, what we're gonna be requesting the community to do around open air ice rinks. We'll review the minutes um, from the last meeting. Um, Peter will date that are listed. Um, and then uh, we'll go on our agenda items next. Um, <clears throat> so without further ado, um, welcome Wang Shen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lopez. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Wang Shen, and I'm the new public health nurse. Um, I graduated from Mass um, College of Pharmacy and Health Science I, uh, with a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing. I used to work as a rehab nurse for about two years, and for this flu season, I was working as an immunization nurse to lead flu shot events in Great Boston area. Uh, I live in Reading. I'm also a Reading resident. I am very excited to be a part to serve my community. And I would like to take this opportunity to provide plan to provide the best uh, public health nursing services for our people and our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. Great to have you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. And you couldn't have come at a more critical time. I can tell you that. And I'm glad you have vaccination expertise because we'll need that for sure. Yeah, I'm prepared for that. Um, so, Xian, um, you also have some uh, background in, in pharmacy and nutrition as well. Xian? Huang? Yes, I do have. Um, um, his experience working as a pharmacy technician, actually it's in the CVS in Reading. Um, and I also work as a nutritionist to provide about 600 patients um, nutritional needs in the oh. past. Well, that's great. So I'd like to um, make a motion, unless anybody had any questions for Sean? Um, I'd like to make a motion to um, appoint John Shen um, to be an agent of the Board of Health. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, roll call, uh, Paula? You. Paula? You're, You're muted. muted. You're You're muted. muted. <laughs> okay, I think that's a yes. Gary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. You're an Thank official you. agent of the Board of Health, John. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks to the board and uh, congratulations on that point. You're official now. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay. So moving on, um, is there any public comment? Um, the only, doesn't sound like there's any comment. Um, so we're gonna skip on the agenda down to um, Christine's report um, so she can you know, make contact. Christine? Uh, yep, hi, good evening. Um, so the data presented does not include uh, today's numbers, um, but the total case count um, to date is 1,130. Uh, total deaths reported is 41. Total number of 
first case is eight. I'm moving on to, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, did you have a question? Christine, what about the active, the current active case? Yep, current active is 302. And again, that doesn't include um, today's first. Just to ask a quick question. Yeah. Yeah, because I thought it was like 435, somewhere in that vicinity, uh, just yeah. even a few some, hours ago. Yeah, and you know, okay. some are coming in like by the 23rd from some of okay. the nurses. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to double check. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And um, what I can do is um, provide Peter with today's numbers um, this evening, if, if that would help. Um, I, I don't know that you have to do that. I think you have enough on your plate. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you, though. Okay. Sure. Um, moving on to the school systems, I did uh, forward the information earlier this week um, just to bring it current and up to date. Um, I clarified with uh, the school nurses. So right now, active, um, I have heard that includes students and uh, teachers or staff people. So uh, a total of 30 active in the public health school system. I can certainly break it down if that would be helpful. I don't, the, the, the total, I don't think sorry. it's gonna impact anything that we do tonight, does it? No, no. no. Okay. Um, right now is uh, a cluster at Artist Senior Living. Um, there are eight residents and three staff members. They do have mobile testing in there every Tuesday and Friday, and they're going to continue that throughout the month. I also confirmed with the director of nursing there that they are scheduled for the COVID vaccine um, to be administered through Walgreens. Um, the first will be on January 19th and the second on February, February 9th. So they're gonna do it at two different times. Um, there is a cluster right now. It is not in Reading, it's at a Reuben Church, but there are six Reading residents affiliated with that cluster. There's also a cluster at a barbershop on Main Street. Um, I have been in contact with the owner of the shop and they are closing for cleaning. I was just informed of that about 30 minutes ago. As far as public uh, sports uh, on the Reading School level, basketball, girls basketball, there are two students and they are quarantining about 14 um, on the girls basketball high school. And um, I apologize, I really do not have anything more to report at this time. Um, if you have any specific questions, I can look through my data. They are about 25 to 35 a day. So um, the caseload's been, you know, it's increasing and it's been pretty heavy. Christine, um, and sorry that the IU and all the nurses that are, are supporting this. So thank you. Um, all that. It's Carrie. Christine, um, are you um, contact tracing collaborative, or are you pretty much doing it all with with you know the other help you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I will be honest to have um, kept it internal. Um, it is get, even throughout the holidays, which um, I think has been great just with regard to being able to know what's going on and keep the numbers updated daily. Uh, my um, contact with the CPC, Sandra Aronson, does share a secure folder, and um, I'm looking forward to Swang actually meeting with her. I, I think you know we can certainly utilize them if needed, but their callback time is a little longer than what I think 
on a local level is able to provide. So my hopes are that we, we can continue to keep it in front. And, um, you know, once uh, playing is made and trained, um, you know, be able to come up with a system when there is a lot of space per day, we can sort of divide and um, have it be a little bit more manageable. Great. Any other questions? Peter? I just, could I just point out that uh, Swang begins her Maven training, Christine Phil, and that next week? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the paperwork has been submitted, and we're just waiting on the state forwarding um, the different uh, dates. I do know that um, we, are, we both uh, looked at the preliminary training for the COVID vaccine and um, both are signed up for that swing tomorrow, and I will be on to. Right. Um, hey, um, <clears throat> Christine, it's Kevin. I just had a couple of quick questions. I'm, I'm always curious to find out, um, and if you don't know off the top of your head, I'll get the information, sure. what we're looking at as far as severity, hospitalizations, that kind of thing from the cases that we're getting. Yeah, um, I can tell you that but the amount of hospitalization, yeah, minimal. Um, those that are hospitalized are being discharged within two days, and they're recovering quite well. A lot of um, patients are being offered uh, the remdesivir, and or um, you know, if they've developed like a a, a COVID related pneumonia, they're quickly placed on prednisone and uh, azithromycin. So we do see people recovering quicker than in the beginning. Um, and possibly uh, that's due to the treatment uh, treatment options that are provided. Okay. Hospitalizations though are definitely down and um, at a minimum. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And, and uh, from a symptom standpoint, of folks, is it still what it was before, where there it's more on the minimal side of symptoms? Yeah. I would say, um, you know, for younger for the younger folks, yes. Yeah, um, symptoms uh, are really bearing over the past, uh, I would say, from the first of the year to present, they really are bearing. So um, okay. a lot of households now, I would say that's the main source of spread. Sure. Yep. That makes sense for this time of year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for everything you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, Christine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry. Hi, Christine. I'm sorry. I just wanted to follow up on that household transmission piece because that is the place where there are the clusters, and that's by far the largest place where this is happening. For household yeah. transmission, do you know is that um the people do it's speculation as far as um isolation procedures and quarantine procedures? Um to minimize that household transmission, or is that just yeah. something that we're going to ride? And it's oh, it is really difficult. I mean, playing, but um, no. you know, some some choices um, that people may make, such as gatherings, uh, um, you know, in some sporting events, it's very difficult to see the reason why. I think people do stand the isolation and quarantine guidance that's out there, um, but when once they're affected by it. They really, so they say they understand it, but they really do need to, it has to be explained on a simple level. And when there's multiple household um, cases involved, you know, even um, might be provided with a different isolation state based on um, their symptom and if they're truly able to isolate in a household. Right. So there's, um, there's a lot of variables involved and it does take, you know, quite a bit of time per case, especially when there are multiple people affected. I think that, you know, the fact that there's, um, <clears throat> that there's that asymptomatic period, and then mm -hmm. you know, uh, people may have the mild symptoms, you know, by the time that person gets, they've already exposed everybody in the household for several days, and it's sort of yeah. the out of the bag. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Just that's something I know people ask questions about, and, and I think it's good if we can dig into it just a little bit. So thank you. Sure, sure. No problem. 
So we're going to actually talk about something other than COVID for the next half hour maybe or so. Um, Bob asked uh, if we could have a discussion about alcohol licensing in the tech select board. So I'll let him kind of set the context and we can go. Okay, Bob. thanks, Rick. <clears throat> A few years ago, uh, in doing some uh, paperwork, we uncovered that uh, the liquor process the town used 30 odd years ago was not accurate. To take a whole new, different approach to liquor licenses in Reading than any community has. We went through a home rule petition process so that all the liquor licenses exist under a home rule petition, which basically means the select board, town meeting, voters, to uh, Branches of the legislature, state, and the governor must all agree. Somewhat of a cumbersome process. So that was done again a number of years. Give this background because to add a new category of license is not a simple thing. Again, a complicated path like right. Recently, there's been a request by one of the uh, to be able to sell beer and wine in his convenience. Now, under current state law, by default convenience store includes that would recognize such and in addition gas stations that sell some product um, so again the default if the town went through a normal process would be that all such establishments could potentially be eligible to find license so given that as a background the select board as a courtesy wanted to ask our uh, our coalition at the police department formerly our cast and our board of health um, if you wish to share an opinion to do so. And then they also asked uh, the business community, the Chamber of Commerce, and such, certainly uh, also give. <clears throat> At their meeting a week from next Tuesday, they are going to take this topic up. Um, so <clears throat> any uh, feedback that the Board of Health, um, you know, chooses to give uh, would be most welcome and most helpful if it's uh, even either in person that night or a preference would be if something can be in writing for next Tuesday. When they get their packet sent out at the end of the day. Um, sort of the overview and it's um, you know how the board chooses to answer the question as to you know should beer and wine license the convenience you um, I would say that you certainly don't have to give a yes no answer you could certainly say well you know perhaps yes but with the following thought you know conditions thoughts whatever Rick and I and, and Peter and Jean had a discussion, uh, I guess it was on Monday. Um, and, you know, that's the kind of nature is not just a simple question, complex. Liquor is always a complex topic. You know, clearly one of the concerns that I would have and most of us would have that have done work in here for the town is uh, easy access of alcohol to minors. So, um, you know, when you do talk about opening up potentially locations for alcohol, you know, that, that comes with a, uh, that that's going to be a risk. The board has already discussed this at a very preliminary basis, and that topic came up. And uh, town council will be present at their meeting a week from Tuesday, and it certainly is uh, within the board's per request condition. So, you know, only so many licenses, this type of establishment, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, I'll turn it back to Rick because Rick had a lot of good good ideas. So um, I, I sent to the board members some internet searches. I've done this whole issue from a uh, public health. And what the research, and, and the research is quite varied. There was international review. There was one from Australia, one from uh, Kansas, Wisconsin, a lot of people have looked at this and and the bottom line is that the um, the density of um, area um, does seem to correlate with um, alcohol consumption violent crime car accident um, you know they they've linked these um, significant and so so it's not surprising you know um, that uh, that that's the case, um, you know. Some of these studies have been done in inner more 
urban inner city type uh, arrangements, but there have been others done in, you know, it's, um, as well, where there are counties that try have liquor licenses and they see these different and the incidents. Of these. So I think the, um, I, I sort of had in our discussion on Monday, I, I sort of had three take and then I'll just go for other comments. And I'm certainly willing to um, put together a brief memo to the select board based on whatever we agree. Um, but the, the three thoughts, uh, one is that, um, you know, because we, because we're in a suburban area um, and we're not, uh, you know, a city in the middle of an Iowa or uh, whatever we do, we'll have rates because people have to travel 25 miles to get their six pack. You know, we have to realize that there's a limit to what we can do in Reading. People go to, you know, five other towns you know, in the surrounding area. Um, and, um, you know, I think that. Uh, we probably do not want to have a wide open, um, any convenience firm, gas station, wine and beer can do so, uh, simply because it, it provides excessive access to youth. Um, but also these studies would show that that could be risky to the community uh, here in Reading. So that's sort of, um, you know, it does seem that in these, in some of these studies, it did seem that um, alcohol licenses that were given to a food establishment, restaurant, um, seem to have less an impact on public health than, um, you know, offsite uh, drinking. And they don't really know why. You should, well, maybe because the bartender says you've had enough. Um, but. Uh, but I suspect also people who go out to dinner, sit down, adults, there's a limit to how much you can drink and so forth. And so it doesn't pose as much. Um, and then, so in my, one way of looking at this was there's, and at one end of the spectrum, um, you know, I think that having wine and beer available at every gas station and, and convenience store is like the worst possible scenario. And providing uh, liquor licenses, which I guess we have some capacity, eight to 10 or so more, to uh, food establishments or the restaurant are preferable if, if licenses were to be granted. And then the only other, and Gene had mentioned this in terms of some of the, um, you know, the sort of and apartments that are going up uh, in the center of town, that a lot of those buildings do have uh, first floor kind of retail. And, um, you know, they may have, they're sort of in the, in the middle where, um, you know, tea shops that sell alcohol, but wine and beer, but they, um, they also sell lots of other. That is somewhere in between and probably CERN than gas stations and community. Um, and so, so my perspective is, you know, and we can't limit it, you know, greatly because people will go elsewhere. But um, I would strongly, um, it would have to be really good reasons to grant uh, it to gas stations and, um, and, and convenience stores. It just isn't uh, worth the risk already in the town and telling community need to do more of that. For restaurants and for specialty stores, I think we could do up. So that, so I'll stop. That, that was sort of my thoughts. Go ahead, Bob. You're on mute. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rick. You reminded me. I should have the background. Um, right now in Reading, there's, there's basically two types of place, uh, package stores and food establishments. We are out of uh, package store restaurants. Uh, package licenses, rather, those those are all taken. And just so you know, Pample Moose technically falls in that class. It had its own home rule petition, um, but for now it's classified as a package, even though it clearly does many other things. Um, council will be in and have to talk to the board about maybe reclassifying them, which would then perhaps open up that type of use to other. 
then on the restaurant side, um, there are, as Rick mentioned, there's there's a lot of available licenses. It's eight or ten. So although the town does have eight or ten, or ten for our population size, that isn't just right now not. So I just wanted to make sure to add this: um, the beer and and wine uh, license request would not fall under the restaurant category. It would fall under the package category. Or, or else they would have just, uh, you know, grabbed one of the open licenses. Um, the convenience store that Ashley served food, and some economic development opportunities we've heard about and seen, also has a food component, but not enough to be called a restaurant, more like a pamphlet. So that's that's just some additional background. So any other thoughts on that? Go ahead, Carrie. You look like you want to say. <laughs> I, I'm trying to decide if I'm asking a question first or if I'm <laughs> if I'm saying something first. That's I'm, um, so, so I'm sorry. So we have the package. The what's the number of that we have for package? I missed that number. We're full. I just missed how many there were. You know, I don't remember. It's five or six. <clears throat> um, six. Six. Um, and. This is beer and wine only, but the access point is very different. Um, and that's uh, that, so I, I hear that as framing too. And yeah, I, I agree with, with what you said, Rick, about, you know, um, I, I, it would take for additional um, licenses in, in, in retail settings um, because of the concerns about access for you. And, and there was actually a, a really some, for a winter institute, there's a really nice presentation on Monday um, by a, a researcher at, at the school um, who focused, and um, he he was talking specifically about um, the increase, or one of the, the increase in binge drinking um, that they're seeing in the last year or so, and and certainly ease of access goes right along with you know then binge. Drinking. So um, yeah, I I I would I would want to hear a very compelling reason for why we would want to be adding. Yeah, I could, I'm not at all moved to go forward with this myself, but what's worth. And so just to be clear, Bob, I don't care you said beer and wine. I, I, we're talking about, I thought we don't have beer and wine licenses. Or is he, is he asking the town to go and create that category through the legislature? Um, Restaurants, Kevin, we do have one established license. They could have asked for a full alcohol, a little cheaper not to. Um, this request does not fit under restaurants, so it must fit right. under. Um, we have a package store, all alcohol, but we don't have, I'll say, package store in quote, beer and wine only. And that's, that's where this right. falls. Right. Okay. I remember that. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think, you know, from what you said earlier, Rick, you know, it could be the Wild West out there if it's opened up and every, everybody that sells a bag of potato chips, right? Um, you know, that, that's um, certainly not where we want to go, um, especially because then they're going to start. We have a lot of areas that can be, um, that are, have commercial components to it. And, maybe, you know, you could foresee that really ending in a, in a, in a poor decision from a health standpoint. Interesting. It's an interesting thing to, have to look at. I think this board, it's, a, it's probably a fairly simple thing to look at from a health standpoint, right? You know, we don't have to worry about the economic part of it. We don't have to worry about, um, you know, all that aspect that the select board takes into account. Look at a simple, this is almost basic math, right? Um, so I, I, I think, I think you could easily come up with a, a recommendation from the three of you tonight to send, so they have a day as to with the, Direction the Board of Health would would go in. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I um, I also think there is somewhat of an impact if if a lot of uh, convenience stores stations were selling alcohol in terms of an impact in terms of the board, um, the health division um, having to monitor these facilities or selling to underage people. I mean, that becomes an issue. So instead of that being an issue for, you know, the current few, it, right. now, it now could be in the um, right. place. 
Does anybody have any knowledge of the public health impact up in New Hampshire? Because they do that a lot. Every gas station has beer and wine there. I think what um, Paula keep in mind is that there's a big difference in how the um, how the population is laid out, right? There's a lot more spread out areas. We're talking yeah. about a lot more rural areas, so it truly really becomes a convenience to go one mile. Yeah, I get um, that to the store. So it's, I'm, I'm sure it's partly that, and partly live free or die. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just kind of how they how they handle their their things up there. So yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, but they do have, but not not the mass level we have as density that we have down here as far as the way the communities are set up. And they actually have, um, I think the distribution of alcohol other than beer and wine is through the state, right? Don't the, doesn't New Hampshire have state um, stores? And you, they do have I don't state think, stores, but I don't think it's, 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 it's She's right. It's, it's in convenience stores, supermarkets, pretty much, yeah. Right. I mean, I think any, anyone, it seems like anybody that wants to sell a bag of chips can sell a, a case of beer. Any other comments or thoughts? I can, can sort of draft something. Pretty strong. I've lived here long enough to remember when Reading was dry. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, I, I sort of restate what I said earlier, especially because of the process Reading followed. Um, they can ask for something very tailored. So they could say, you know, for instance, they have said, uh, one license for pamphlet move. Um, they request anything because it has to be through a home rotation as opposed to some broader you know, policy at the state. So are you saying, Bob, that they can um, pick and choose? Yeah. Okay. So they wanted to say, we are going to grant this one, just one. That doesn't mean it opens the door for five, six, seven others and to come in unless they have to come before us. Did, yeah, if they did not if they just ask for the category, you get it all. Um, I, you know, because they haven't had part of the discussion, but really they're certainly um, empowered to ask something that they want, not to fault into getting everything. Okay, well, that's, that's useful information. That's good to know, too. Okay. Um, so, so with that, and um, I'll put together some bullets and um, get the select board. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. All right. Um, this is yet another discussion on the open air ice cream. Um, <laughs> hopefully the last discussion on the open air ice rinks. Um, this is an easy one. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, you know, I, you know, he canceled in between meeting on December 29th because it looked like the weather was good. And, you know, a couple of times I've driven past some of these um, open air rinks and, and, but actually, you know, I, I must not have taken a course in, geothermodynamics because um, the park actually did freeze over even though the daytime temperatures were above freezing. And I, I sort of didn't think about this is why balls, it collects on the grass and not on the you know, asphalt. It's, the, you know, the ground is colder. Um, and there were, this was I think on uh, Monday or Tuesday. And um, you know, there were like about Sturgis Park probably 15 to 20 year olds playing hockey oh. um, as expected. And then I drove down to uh, the high school and there were a few um, handful, five. Um, and in both cases, no one was wearing a mask. Great. So, great. <laughs> so um, awesome. as predicted. Right. So, um, Specifically, what we want to do today is um, either be a potential sign that would go up around these three sites that um, would let people know about what they should be doing when they're when they're out there ice skating, 
and we want to um, have a discussion, make edits as we see fit, um, and then approve it so it's, it's clearly an order. Um, so I will um, open it up for discussion, what people thought, what the things we should change or keep the same or add. Are you referring to the signage or just in general? Yeah, just this this document that uh, Peter had. Is anybody had. able to screen share? I had to, um, oh. thank you. I go. did actually have some um, grammatical kind of issue with it. Okay. Um, hold on, I had screen. Um, we must wear facial covers. Practice. And practice social distancing rather than practicing. Yes, good catch, Paula. <laughs> uh, another thing that in your house under present. No sports equipment of any kind is allowed on outdoor. I was wondering if some of this stuff be either bold or underlined to really draw attention. That was just an opinion. I don't know what a length, but. Um, I I agree, Paula. I my my um concerns, and I had asked about the size um because my concern was that we were providing a lot of fine print um and I wasn't sure how much it was going to get read um yep. right yeah just thinking about um and and I mean that's what we want to make sure that they um. Would like to hope that somebody might read it and take it seriously and remember to put on a mask. Um, um, so that that was where I that's where I, where I was. Peter, can you remind me? Do, or do you maybe was you do you remember how how big this sign was going to be? You're muted, Peter. Sorry about that. I, I know Jenna has spec it out with engineering. They're going to you're going to draft it up. Print it, and then uh, Public Works is going to post it for us. But I don't know the size. We're in a, in a society that going paperless. If we, you know, don't want to use some other measures and have this placed on online, and I don't know, use some other means to get the word out for would be skaters. Yep. Well, I think I what we have out there right now, they're two by twos, aren't they? Somewhere in that vicinity, okay. the mask up writing signs that we have. Oh, yes, yeah, that's about so right. So they're they're not on paper; they're on that like the um, mm -hmm. yard sign that you see. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also wondering. I'm also I I love blue, but I'm wondering if that's the people's eyes. I mean, that's not my bag doing right. the uh, you know the research on marketing. Techniques for staff. Right. I, I am able to comment on the three or four question marks sitting there, and I thought that was going to be four. If this isn't work, then we should probably just, you know, have a mask up ready when we go and maybe something there because something about tech they want to proceed with it. I, I think there is an awful lot of information on a sign. Well, but at the me, same time, if you show up at a rank, you're you're not going to be looking it up on the website. Right. Before we could get the and put a QR code on there. Um, and we, I mean, huh? I don't know what a QR code is. It's it's that um. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think I do know. A barcode kind yeah, of thing. A barcode, funny yeah. squiggle. Yeah. It's the yeah, funny yeah, squiggly yeah, box, right? And, yeah. and they use it at the at the restaurants sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I've used it. I mean, I don't, I really, I don't want to belabor this, but I also, I do want to, um, I, 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 I do want to make sure that our, our, our message is actually going to get read. And I think I, you're right here, but also I would post it kind of like we posted the mask up sign at the trails. I would post it, but I'd also, I will, I want to put it on our, on the webpage right next to the, um, the numbers and the, how you find the map and so forth. So. I don't think it would be there. Well, and Peter, I don't want to, excuse me for a second, offend the ACTV studios who operate. I mean, there were plenty of 
year, huh? years and years when the when the uh, popular press would be at these meetings. And they do a story. Make this sign. And people mm -hmm. would be talking about it. You know, that, that's fun by the wayside. So we attract people to come to the to come to the website to get their in. How do we blast it to every city, every home? Well, we used to ask maybe for it to be like part of the flipping um, postings on the on the um, RCTV channel, you know, just you like go. their other public notices, you know, it dated that way. That's I would want to see idea. it on the website and I would want to see it posted at the, the skating location. Because um, we want it, because, you know, honestly, <laughs> Some of this is making sure the parents read it so that the parents right. can say, hey, <laughs> you got your right. mask, um, you know, less, you know, and then a reminder for the thing. And I and fair notice that, you know, this is there are going to be spot checks and we're, you know, we've committed to that. Right. Um, yeah. That's all. So and people look worried. What about for the schools? Is there any uh, chance for that? Here you go. Uh, Put these in the school rather yep. than at the park. In addition to. In addition. Okay, and then put them at the park. We yep. already think that there's, there's too much fine print. Well, I think, that, so. I, I think that, I think if it's two by two, as Kevin said, I mean, that's a reasonable size. I think there would need to be at least um, these, these ice rinks are pretty large. And yeah. so if you tuck one sign on one side, you know, people get gather on the other side, they may not notice it. So I would think there ought to be at least a couple signs at each of these rings and the lawn things. I think I think that would be fine. Um, I I think that having uh, in addition, and yep. if yep. it doesn't have to be two by two, this could be more of a flyer that could be posted on a bulletin board um, or in in the schools or wherever they. Post this kind of information. So um, they have weekly. Um, they have weekly updates that they that they send out. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's a, the uh, the principals of each school. So that that'd be a great landing page for that. Yep. No okay. paper right there. Right. Uh, so our grammar is uh, up to speed. <laughs> yeah, you yes. got it right. <laughs> Peter. So, so I had yeah. like a couple other um, questions or or suggestions. One is that. Um, Enforced by the Board of Health is per order of the Board of Health. So yeah. I, I think it would it feels a little bit more um, uh, intentional if we say per the order of the Board of Health, um, so that they know that requirement. Yep. Um, I think that on the second bullet, where it says all skated must wear facial covering and practicing social distance at all times. I think also sort of on the ice. Um, I didn't. I struggle with this, but you know, I think that kind of gets to the checking and means they shouldn't be checking. I don't know if it adds too much words. Uh, you know, that's that would be something to, to consider. And then lastly, um, on the the third bullet. I remember we uh, we were talking about this, but I don't know where we exactly came down on it. Um, you know, this is where um, do kids come and put up their uh, nets, you know, hockey nets. Um, and I'm trying to, for the third bullet from a COVID perspective and what the, what I'm saying, but what was the rationale or is there rationale? We don't wanna, we don't want to have orders that don't have a scientific backing. Um, you know, if, if kids are going to put on a mask, skate around with their, um, you know, with their sticks, um, as long as they're, being, they're keeping, you know, when they're on the ice, they're wearing masks. Um, I don't see where we need to necessarily restrict uh, or it, have, have bullet so. Does anybody remember? I remember that conversation, Kevin. You were saying about pickup games and everything. 
Yeah, I actually I have a few points, but that one in particular, Rick, I, I actually have a little bit of an issue with. I'd really hate to turn away a kid who shows up at that ice with a stick and a puck and they're there, and all they want to do is practice stick in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I kind of have a problem with not allowing the equipment on there in general. I think um, not allowing games or practice is probably a more practical way to phrase that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you hate you hate to turn away that one individual um, in, in that regard. And, and that, and I know we're now we're belaboring this, but sorry. Um, the the first all two may be moot two weeks. So from a from a mm-hmm. simplicity standpoint, you know, you'd be better off referring to hearing have more than that um, rather than putting a set number. Because that number is going to change. It's going to fluctuate. The twenty five, yeah. it could go lower. Yeah, that's so true. you need to not have a number; it needs to just be pointed to what the state guidance is at the time. So I think I'm hearing remove a third bullet altogether. Yeah, I think yeah. you can replace it, not but replace it with um, something to the effect of no, um, no games or practices allowed. Okay. About you know the rec. Policy. Those uh, when you bring your own hat, that they end up, you know, melting into the ice, get spare, and then they have a problem get out the spring. So let's let's change number three to just say no, no games. No drills is okay, but yeah, no, drills are okay. Yeah, no, no drills games, no practice. practices. No, no drills, drills, games, or scrimmages, if yeah. you want to say that. Yeah. Okay. No hockey games. Is I mean, not drills. Sorry, no no games um, practices or scrimmage. Right. Right. Because I yeah I I would want to keep it up for you know like, again some Sunday morning a kid who's really getting after it is Absolutely. you know up at seven a.m. out there on the ice yep. just doing stick handling drills by himself. Passing up and yeah. down. Yeah. That's Absolutely. The yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got that. But I I think the sticking point would be a, you know very clear that. There is a limit per the state, and, and maybe that's where you, maybe that's where you put in your little QR code that links to <laughs> state site that says this is the limit, and then yeah. it's on them to change it. We don't have to do a thing. Yeah. So whatever they have, that's what we have. Maybe that's the way to do it, or maybe just um, uh, you you must abide by state uh, outdoor gathering limitations. Yeah. Yes. I hate to be uh, negative. Like- I hate to be negative, but do you really think people are going to do that? No, but it covers us. No. True. So when when somebody drives by and says, "Hey, thirty is here," you can't do that. Yep. On the sign. Look. That's right. You, so it's it's just it's making sure we're covered <laughs> more than anything. Paul, I agree with you. It's definitely not going to be yep. adhered to at all. Uh, yep. I guess. Yep. Although I I haven't I don't know if I've ever driven by one of these these places seen that many people on at once. Um, I think you usually see, you know, 12 to 15, um, but could be wrong. Peter? This is not a sign. It's not as simple as all that. Someone needs to pick this up and say, Reading has spent two hours. Reading Board of Health has spent a couple of hours developing it. They think it's serious enough to take it and then let it be published. Use different types of office, including the cable itself, run there. And stuff. It, it's taken me a while to wrap my head around, I'll tell you, but it's, it's almost believing. This is this is basic public health from where I came from. Right now, my whole day is assumed to the, to the heck. The yeah, vaccine is going to come. When is it going to get here? How are we going to get ah! But something like this, I, I wish I had the connections with the, the media out there. Oh, but, but I think Jane doesn't Jane have those connections? Yeah. We have a vibrant email okay. list uh, yep. that we can utilize, a Facebook page that we can utilize. I, I absolutely know um, that if you send this to the um, to the media, they'll they'll write a uh, write. Right. So I think you, I think you need to give it to Jane. Yeah. And, okay. You know, just like she did the mask up campaign. Yeah. Yep. Okay. She yep. don't know how to put it out. Yeah. We're not. Gonna, I don't want to revisit this. You don't have to. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make the the grammatical change from practicing to practice. We're going to uh, you know 
put these signs up, at least a couple at each site, in the two by two. We're gonna post it on the website. You're gonna speak to Jane about yep. um, getting it out there. Uh, you know, get it to the schools um, as okay. well. She would know how to do that so that it could be posted or be known in the schools. Um, we're gonna change the first, we're gonna say for order of the Board of Health, not forced by. Yep. For the first bullet, we're going to revise it to say, you know, the groups are limited by current at, in case people wanna okay. look at that. We're going to, um, the third bullet, we're gonna eliminate, we're just gonna say no hockey games practices or sprint. Um, and, and then we're gonna have the fix a thing where the question marks are if you would suggest. I think that if we can, uh, to whatever degree we can make the lettering as large as that would be good. Um, I think those were all the, all the suggestions. And I think well, I had one with the bold, yeah. like things like when you when you say no, make that bold. If, you know, right. anywhere you're saying no, this, no that. Yeah. And all and all. Or must must oh, yeah. great words always make bold. Yeah. Stuff like that. Peter, and what about the color? In color. I I, I, don't I like mind the it. color. Yeah, I like the color. It's just I'm not sure it's going to catch people's eye. Well, I think you know we're looking at it in a small, going to be a much bigger board yeah. when it comes out. Okay, I think it's unusual, right? And I think it, we're talking about winter time against the snow. Blue kind of pops against that. Well, that was. You have another color scheme, Paula. Um, I mean, we could go orange, both. We could we could go dramatic, but um, I, I had I I just thought that was my thinking. Um, I don't know. No, I'm fine with it if everybody else is. It was just a thought. <clears throat> Has everybody been to the piece on the on the town's website? We they explain or notify the town about fixing everything for potholes. So that's going to go with the four uh, questions. And who page going to be on that, Peter? The landing page will be uh, right at the town. Person, no. um, right in the town yeah. opening web. Uh -huh. on the left I, I'm sorry. I'm saying. I'm. I'm oh. saying. I'm asking a question wrong way um okay. who um when you when you do these c-click fixes they really get assigned for a category somebody around town cpw or um rmld what have you so who who is the person that we're you going to utilize this that's going to be sent to gene oh. <laughs> seems like the question you're asking is you know c-click fix is a software program and it's going to need a uh, an end an end user to deliver the message to, and so, um, I guess that's really up to how the board wants to handle this. Typically, if it's going to be something that health will do the enforcement on, you would want somebody in health. Whether you want um, directly to Peter, or if it made more sense for it to go to Jackie, um, you know. Jack is do handling a lot of inquiries that come in and mm -hmm. track things. So people that won't be working on Saturday and Sunday and, <laughs> and shouldn't have to. <laughs> yep. um, that's kind of where I'm going along with this because right. that's when you're going to probably have to complain <laughs> if at all. Right. I, I, I've loved, I told Jackie and somebody from REF too, like they should, they, they would, I would think they would want to know, right? Or no? Well, well, the, so the person that this lands on is going to jump in there. Yep. I assume, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's what we're talking about here. No, I mean, let, let me ask Jackie yeah. this question without without picking on her though. When that when they do click on that website uh, area, where does it go? If I get redirected to me sometimes. I had a septic system the other day, and you know, who knows? So it does <laughs> depend on um whichever category they select okay. um so there is sort of a mapping within there pick pothole <laughs> goes to deep pick, um septic or something like that it goes to you and um, so it, it varies depending on the category and so, so we're gonna have to create a new category i don't know but because I, I don't see anybody rushing out as if it's you know burning building what happens 
and it, this is Jenna talked to me the other day that they checked those and we had asked to find out that folks were going there complaining about it. That's when we're going to put some surveillance. It's not a piece where, okay, Saturday at 10 a.m., there's like 20 people down there. Someone drives by and says, crazy, there's 20 people down there right now. Well, we already did have a discussion about <clears throat> hiring someone to be a state guard, a hating guard, whatever we have. So the point would be to you know, try to measure it that way with the number of complaints coming in. And then you know, it's not working. We just post the place, no, you know, no skating allowed. Right. That was that was my memory. We wanted this as as a as a a, a feedback loop, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily immediate action trigger, but a, a feedback how the policy okay. was working. And then I think Jenna was saying that you know they might you know staff might that rec as well as is, is help maybe kind of just doing a drive by just just to get what was happening, not looking to um, enforce, but just just to see um, what kind of okay. use there is. So. If that's a, if that's what we're talking, that's fine. I just didn't want it to get mm -hmm. kind of mucked up on the weekend when we don't have coverage. It's like you get flown off, Kevin. I think if you came mm -hmm. in on a Monday morning and were ten complaints over the weekend. Guess what? Someone's got to be assigned to go there the following weekend to make sure this is like. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think that's reasonable, Peter. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, we're gonna move on. So I think Peter, you have. You have your marching orders. Yes. I guess I can stop sharing this page. Or... Thank you, Peter. That was an interesting kind of change. <laughs> um, Peter, can I, I, I have to talk to Jane about the website. Can I volunteer to kind of follow up, follow up, help you with this, on, with her on this too? Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yep. Absolutely. I'm actually uh, sending a little uh, chat chat to help get all the notes. I don't have to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, so Terry, let's talk about this. Okay. Um, minutes from uh, the December 7, 2020 meeting. Uh, only people who had a chance to look at edits, comments, suggestions. I don't think I had any. Neither. They're really well done. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So I make a uh, I'd like a motion to approve the minutes from twenty. Um, Second. Uh, roll call, Paula. Yes. Very. Yes. All right. Nice. <laughs> Peter, your monthly report, then uh, we'll. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. The last time we talked about monthly reports, I said I got it, I got it, but it's not going to happen. You know, first of the year, it's going to mm -hmm. take a while. And these holidays were very difficult. Because so many people in health have had so much time. They just, they just see them sort of see it to the point where I today have a staff meeting at four o'clock and filling in as many blanks as those for you. Now, in a format slightly different than the one that was approved uh, back. On. So let's get started with some. And I should page share this because follow my outline and notes on the side. At four o'clock this afternoon, we went and start with the environmental health piece. And I asked the number of uh, permitted established versus the renewals that were sent out. And I think we're three short of the number of permits that were sent out. The number of permit applications sent out was 250, and we have 250. Three delinquent that's following up. Now, some of these permits uh, apply to to uh, one facility. I'd have two different permits. That could be a dumpster permit at a supermarket, tobacco control permit there as well. But the bottom line here, first, 
so we can all get together. Um, so that would be the first one, number of permits established versus the number of renewals sent out are pretty close, pretty close to that one in being in compliance. Uh, the number of complaints and by category I want, and you know, mm -hmm. for example, how many dumpster complaints are in ground sewage disorder. Just in the last two days, I've got one each of dumpsters in ground. I'm still not really secure that, you know, there's a really good method of this, but we're working mm -hmm. on it. Now, it's a was told earlier today, Mark keeps track of it and there's a place you can go and look at it as they roll in. Kind of one of them category, finite number of, of uh, huh. ranging from air quality to waste huh. and everything in between. So I'm not sure that's exactly where we want it, but it's like clear to staff that this has to get better every month. And that slide, partially because there was COVID in the IT, but we were meeting on a weekly permit working well and they and they really were working. Mm -hmm. Trust upon them the idea that the board now just wants this kind of, simultaneously they were working on uh, helping field uh, inspection form that you could use an iPad sort and document any violations so in the field they would get Ported back, back in the, in the mainframe there. But I asked her, can you tip that off because you know major part. I before we want the convenience of doing um, infield inspection, I'd like to be able to capture what we're doing in a broader picture. And then things started to die off because the whole in a Corona revival arrived in this picture. So we have to get back on that, and that's that's scheduled to. I hope it's not by February, okay, the end of the first quarter in 2021. We have something flowing in here that I don't think it's that difficult to do what you guys asked for earlier. That's part of development. Yep. So, <clears throat> and there were three lists. Laura uh, developed three lists and assigned them. Who's doing which establishment? How many of them are there? One of the timeline. So we can start to track who's doing what now year is over or part of the year is over. Do we have 25% of the inspections done by now? There's got to be a way to track that. And I think they're getting it. I'll be happy to get anything in between. Like really, this is a major shift in the way the division was operating before. And although we never got many complaints apparently about how it was being done, you know, I think um, Rick brought it up earlier, you know, when the reporter shows up from the Boston Globe uh, spotlight team, it's like, are we going to be able to get our fingers on the files? It says the last time we inspected one of our food establishments, you know, this, this. I'm always a little bit nervous, something a little bit more broader. My generation, they watch with, so what did you know and when did you know it? Hmm? And I'd like to get a, hand, a better handle on it. So uh, finally, and I think this is probably the easy one to track, and I'm really curious when it comes to spending money, but we have a part-time inspector, and we, I want to know how many hours he's putting in for and how many inspections he's doing to earn that money. That should be very simple. So at the top mm -hmm. on the environmental public health, you know, we're going to start to make progress. Everything is going to be a, a work of I hope to be able to, well, let's be fair. I'm going to get off of this, out of this meeting, and then I'm going to meet with Kwong, and we'll talk about that right back into COVID. There's just so many loose ends on that that are way more important than what we're talking about in fine public health. But it's there. My, actually, we're paying, and I would like to see some very tight. Around. Any questions on environmental public? Okay. Yes. I just want to know what to help you in any way to support you in getting the, the, the data going. Is there anything we can do? Because I'm 100% with you on, and want to make sure that we help you. 
Well, thanks for that offer. And I, I would say this, that if I can go to my staff and say, look, I'm being leaned on by this board of health about it. They want to I'm see these things done and down. So something's got to stop somewhere. And, you know, I don't like to be that way, but I can. I hope that it can motivate to other means. But if it comes down to, I, I don't know, using carrot stick. That's so mm-hmm. old school management style. But it seems to me that, you know, something's got to give before it's going to get. So mm-hmm. let's go. So I'll not throw anybody under the bus, but I will use you as leverage to say this is coming from above. Now, come on. Let's talk yep. epidemiology for a second. And uh, that should say Christine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Best. Uh, she's been working a lot of onboarding playing this huge and typical contract tracing out straight with that. We already heard about this thing. And now plus adding the breakdowns to the raw data, how many from the schools and I should have reported out hit to folks how many high school students we're seeing and right down the line. Right? So that's what's going on with genealogy. And somewhere between number two and number three, there's, there's a lot of overlap. And the biggest thing is the first responder vaccine up. The first responders lost their back. They've been waiting long enough. They're leaning on anybody who will let them uh, get stuff in place. Now, before we can do that, a few, few more hurdles we have to uh, you know, get over. And thank God that Wayne got here just in time, and she's got plenty of energy right now. I don't know how long it's going to take for us to eat it out of her or anything, but uh, you know, just today, we made more advancements than I was able to make all week. Finally, and it was finally received word back from MIIS that we, uh, we do have a number that happened earlier this week, and today I got. It's on form, stop pleading uh, so we could have an against event. It, it is the expectations of our first responders, and I think it's a reasonable one, but not today. They want the vaccine very quickly. And they want to be able to have someone administer it this shift as the shift is getting on. Because we have to rely on the end over, the number of reasons that I went, I just alluded to, you'd have to connect some of the dots and it help I can do that for you. But uh, before we can get the vaccine in our own schools, we have to depend on Andover. Andover has agreed to come down two days, a few hours each day, and get any first responders as we, we can. And you know, to me, that seems reasonable. To many other people, they don't get why is it so difficult to vaccinate 135 folks? Why can't we just do it the way they want to do it? And Biggest reason behind <clears throat> uh, sort of with my head in clouds about prep mod. Anybody know that yet? Even the last carrot. I can imagine. Well, I, I, go ahead. You want to say something at this point? Cause, no. Okay. I'll let you. Yeah, yeah. Let me just keep going. I could find some rhythm. Yeah. Prep mod was unveiled to local health on Monday this week. Went to the first training session on clock, and it lasted for an hour. It was mind boggling. The system is, you know, the first time you see it, it's a lot of moving time. Ultimately, it's going to look like when you Macy's, you want to buy a necktie. You go flipping through their inventory, you click on the one that you want, get out your cat, and you know, Macy's. Next thing you know, they're mailing it. Well, it all work. Prep mod is now let's apply that to vaccine management. And they're going to have an all loaded prep mod with numbers of vaccines allocated to the different regions. And when somebody, this is completely different than what's known for vaccine administration over the years. We know you'll go online, count, plug yourself into one of the available. Um, Clinic that'll be out there and it sort of start in the middle of working its way out. But you've noticed that you've been chosen for this clinic 
you'll come in and you'll get your vaccine. You'll also get points and booster shot. You'll move on. Not be a hundred people showing up on time. Will not be in on deck. First come, first see. Serve none of that business. From the way we're doing this meeting, hopefully, and then show up, get in and get out. Right. And how you can't even get the prep squad piece because you've had the MCVT piece. Couldn't get MVC, MCVT piece till you had the MI piece. <laughs> Somewhere between MIIS and MV, MCVT, we needed a, and this is this is crazy, we needed a medical director. Yep. And when I asked who is our medical director, typically for flu back, everybody pointed, yep. and it turns out to be a nurse who doesn't even work here anymore. And Christine said, I wasn't sure under whose orders I was working under this past year. He was bringing in equipment and uh, supplies from other towns that she was work work, and it's, it's unfortunate. And uh, I try to paint a rosy piece around it because it's not like we're working in a, in a developed nation. <laughs> but we pretty much are starting from scratch, yep. getting these pieces. You can't go to step two. So you can go to three, three step one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the prep squad is going to tell us when for the first response. On yep. our Got it. That's what's yeah. happening in an emergency prep. I, I will also say, I'll also just say one more thing. Uh, is lining that up, we're going to meet after this meeting, go over some of the pieces that she's not uncertain of with our application. So we're like working all over the place. And I'm not the only one. I got this like friend up in the end, and in between, so I'm up at three o'clock in the morning trying to think about it. what do I have to do first tomorrow? I don't know when it's about. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Peter, can I ask about yes, go this ahead. plan prep mod? Um, this is a software program where you go on and you would order or whoever would order. Is this is this a um, is this something? I, I'm I wasn't one hundred percent clear. Is this ordering vaccine from the state? Is this a scheduling system? For people to go on to schedule for their all their of the above, including because the yeah, including the you know, supply chain and the inventory. This is this was purchased by Massachusetts from a California company, and sales rep Kelly he's offering these one hour orientation. Then they're going to let a dummy practice on it, and it can't be that difficult. But you know they're expecting every city in town to have. Few, more than a few administrators to keep it going. Okay, we, we're opening another lot. So we have to include that. The public to use it, I don't see it being as any more difficult going on. But I can just, I just threw in a, a, into the chat, I threw a link from Mass Health Officers that describes the prep mod system a little bit from a, from kind of a, a general use perspective. Not, it doesn't have all the, all the, the, the ugly, dirty stuff that Peter's going through, but it, it gives you that little bit to help folks who want to understand um, specifically. The state has been working on this for a very long time. You'll notice that the heading from um, August 20th, August 14th, August 14th, um, the implementation process for this, since, I mean, it literally just got rolled out. Um, the implementation for process for this has been really, really challenging. Um, so hopefully now that it's finally available, it, it as Peter said, it'll be quick and easy for folks to get trained and, and easy to use. It's available to everybody in the state, um, and it should make it easier um, once people get up to speed on the system. But there's there's a yeah, the, I mean the prep mod prep mod's a new wrinkle in the in the mix of the other other acronym group that Peter was talking about. Um, there's a lot of steps. That need to be a lot of foundation, and then you throw prep mod into it. So, okay. can I can I ask a question? I, um, this is all very new to me and very interesting. So, who's in charge <laughs> once all of this gets in place? Like, who is the one that's deciding when the clinics are going to be held, where they're going to be held? Who's like, even giving the administration doing the administration? Okay, so that's we can stop the top three and emerge. Fire department and the police work together right now. Mm -hmm. Two, 
on a schedule that handle to set up the time. You will know how many administers have nurses that can inject or paramedic. Those guys have those people have their own set of rules too. They have an hour or two hour training. Credentials. So we might say that we have eight stations where you get back 15 minutes per vaccine, 15 minutes wait time, time you get shot. So they're going to bring in four per hour times eight stations. So there's 30 people we can do every hour. Yep. And I hate to say this, but it's happening in Florida and it had a two week bump. And I probably have another one. But they put it on scanners up on television. And I have friends who have gone online and signed themselves up and they wait to get the email back. It says, okay, you've been chosen at this time. Go to Bolivia mm -hmm. County. Down here, they can do it with cars, weather, but it does, it works. And that's yep. what that is. It might even work with CBS better than it could in a municipal level. To mm. So is Andover responsible for every town around here, or is, is it just eight communities <laughs> and 3B? No, that's eight communities and 3B are required to get the back from, from Andover. Not only for the them. only for the first responder piece right now though, Pete. And that's um, not permanent. I think it's gonna go to Andover forever. And we okay. can pick up more, pick up more doses and bring them down once we have MCCP and then we can go up and grab hundreds of doses, bring them down to our refrigerator yep. here at the police. Okay. So then we can do clinics all day long without having to he's not gonna mail deliver to Reading, okay. off Reading. Okay. Andover. Yep. So Andover will be our vaccine depot. They're going to be our vaccine depot. So yep. tell from this from okay. whole event. Okay. And they're also the staff too? Well, they're going to be the staff. Fortunately for us, it is good fortune. It's not good, but it's good fortune that they're going to provide staff, administrative, special, ready for that. For, for, for the way, and then you're yeah. going to shift and kind of see how they can't handle it anymore because the yes. more floodgates to our public, they can't yeah. come and down instead of yeah. our own by right. February. Hopefully, it's February will get to go. And by the way, somebody asked me, How do we, what's all this charging? I keep hearing it. We're able to charge. Who do we get $25 vaccine if we're connected to? Uh, mass Commonwealth Medicine yep. and Reading has not been getting reimbursed for, for back, vaccinated for the last few years. Never bought buy mm -hmm. our vaccine and give it give it away. And that's okay too. We might have had at one time it seems like we were at one time billing medical, but I think that has expired as well. Just not getting these don't that are not here anymore. Yep. Yeah, you're really building up on system building these systems that I mean some of this you know was there a while ago and you're having to try and recreate it and other stuff is new. You're really you're, you're, this is a big lift. I, I'm I'm glad we're getting a chance to hear about it. I, I know some of it. I think it's important that everybody understands this is a big lift. Um I'd like to do it so we had it right and then we had a good play. So we can yep. repeat it. There are, something happened to our play a few years ago. I'm sure there was one there once. I know my predecessor. I know them all. Yep. And there's just been some gaps between the two. And I think the nurse got a hold of it and then they went on their merry ways and took with them connections for who do you have for health? Uh, sorry, a medical director. Yep. And where are you getting your supplies from? All these different pieces. As it sounds like I'm whining, I'm really not. No, you're not. No, you're just telling. You're just I telling mean, the truth. You're it's really complicated about it. It really is yeah. energizing to do something like this. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad I have some help. Some <laughs> <to start playing. laughs> We're going to need you for some. Lots of little tasks. Perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect timing. Hey, yeah, Peter, on the prep yeah. mod, I have a question. I, yeah, I think it ahead. sounds it sounds great. 
Um, it sounds like it's going to be really streamlined, which is uh, which is great. But for a certain population, it's not going to be so user friendly or streamlined. Is it going to be a call in option for prep mod? Yeah. I think you know, it will be. I mean, is it going to be we, some any? There, there are folks that aren't. They're not going to be able to use. Them. They're just not. So where are those fall in the cracks here? Well, I, mean, I haven't quit, I haven't processed that yet, Kevin. But I'll, okay. I'll say this: when we first began a system similar to this for, for permitting our our food establishment, everything we permit. This was in my previous. There were many people that run little mom and pop pizza shops that didn't have their permit on. So for the first few years, they could call in, and there would be somebody there saying it's going to be Jackie, but it's going to have to be someone at the admin level and take the call information, plug it in, and let right. them know it's going to be easy. I think that's going to be easy to solve. It, uh, and that's so not yeah. a okay. All right. I just want to make sure that we're not the people that are not don't have that mm -hmm. will that will going to want this vaccination. So totally. we'll make sure we get capture everybody. I know that's going to be part of it. The senior center is there. We have staff over there that are going to have to get up to speed. It's going to be great. I can just uh, also mention that um, there, the vaccine we're talking about is the Moderna vaccine. Yes. So it does decrease. Correct. Um, it's therefore much easier to store. And um, and I'm the new medical uh, going. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh hey, all right. Thank you. <laughs> You're the man. Tell me about it. Um, okay. So a couple other things. I just um Harry, was were there anything from Incident Command? I know they did they meet this week or was it yes. we met, yeah, we met this week and we met last week. And I just if I can just I just want to touch a couple of things on the EP update from my conversations with Laura. Um so, I mean, one of the questions with the Moderna is about the cold chain um, okay. process. I mean, we have the storage at the police station, but it's making sure we're clear on, do we have the right cooler? Or how is it going to work for getting it to the to the proper site? To so that's something that's taking a little bit of thought and, and work. And I just want to acknowledge that that's another piece of the puzzle that Peter and Frank and, um, and Christina are, are working on. Um, they're pretty, pretty pretty easily, but it, it does require some thought. Um, so we talked about, I talked with Christine because if you've seen, there's some new graphics on the um, on the website. So you can see, I think Rick, you got to share that first chart at the select board on Tuesday. Bob, Bob put it up. Yeah. Bob put it up. Yeah. So, so, you know, through some collaboration with Christine and Jane Wellman, um, we're able to take the data that's stood weekly and convert it into um, a beautiful chart that shows some historical trends and, and make clear the, the challenge that's ahead of us in where the case count is going um, and where it's gonna likely continue. Really good work. Um, and um, um, yeah, command met twice. We talked, you know, I always struggle with this heading of, of pertinent command issues. Um, because I guess I'm not sure what you guys think is pertinent. Um, um, so I, I, I get, I tell, you know, I, I try and try and share. Um, we talked about um, testing, um, talking about whether there's a possibility of getting into getting some testing into the school. Um, spent a little bit of time talking about the uh, ways that that might operate. Have done some other communities around the state who are doing different versions of it um trying to identify costs and and the like um think about groups that it would be appropriate for and and how useful it would be the objective being to see if you can keep get people in school um and provide some psychological safety and some safety um a sense of safety for people as they're in the building together um so that's a that's a constant um we talked about um, sorry, we talked about um, dispensing sites. Um, there is a lot of pressure from the public safety community. They are very eager to have their vaccine as they should be. But I want to be clear: the vaccine is not yet available. It's it, it's not going to be available for them until the clinic starts. So that's next week. But it's not like we're behind. 
um, <laughs> um, I understand completely why um, why the pressure. This is this is around the state. You know, we're we're hearing this. Um, so you know, some conversations about how to get it up and rolling for um, first responder clinics and how do we go about testing the the sensing site model that we have for setup and location and so forth. Um, so that those have been some pretty robust conversations. Um, and um, I've talked about, um, sorry, I'm bouncing back and forth. Oh, we've talked about um, oh, the, the items to um, residents, the dollars available for people under COVID if people needed support for rent or mortgage. Um, I think about $60,000 was dispersed before the end of the year to different folks. We're very grateful for Bob's support um, that they were able to access funds and in collaboration with Reading Cooperative. That was really excellent to, to be responsive to COVID and its impact on the community. Um, That's uh, great. Yeah. yeah. That really is. It's nice to be able to split. Um, we also. We did. We we talked a little bit. We talked about data. Um, we talked about you know. Um, I think we're now our fourth week as, as a red community. Um, and you might recall that uh, under previous guidance, once you were three weeks as a red community, you needed to automatically take a step back. Um, because the governor issued new restrictions uh, that were effective December 26th at midnight, um, that that that's not the hard and fast requirement. Um, those restrictions have been extended. Peter, thanks for sharing that information with everyone. So it's 25% occupancy limits 